we uh, we went through a period where we kind of didn't know what we wanted to do with the band. Like uh, the singer we had been playing with was transitioning out, and uh, we didn't know if we wanted to continue. If we wanted to continue, if we did, if we wanted to continue just the five guys, or how that would even look or work out. And um, you know, we tried a bunch of different guys that were LA based and whatever, and, and nothing was really working. Nothing we were excited about, but. When we heard Chester's stuff that he had done, we, we were just like, okay, this guy can sing. We need to get him out here quick and see you know, what the deal is. We got him out and then uh, said, okay, if, if, if a band is gonna work, this, this, is gonna, this is gonna work. Otherwise, you know, that's, that's the end of <laughs> Lincoln Park yeah. as it is kind of thing. Desk so, jobs, here we come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better polish up something else. It was a three three day period. I got the songs, recorded my stuff, and then on a, a, couple, a few days later, I was uh, in LA um, from Arizona. I was living in Phoenix, and I uh, came out, and the rest is kind of history. Uh, first guy I met was Brad. Um, we both went to college together. Yeah, so I met Brad when uh, I think I was like 18, and uh, he had known Mike since junior high, and they had known Rob for a while. And Mike went to school with Joe, so they met there. We found this guy a couple years later. Yeah, we did, um, we had a different guy singing and uh, we did a good, I don't know, a couple years of just playing some different uh, showcases, stuff like that for different record companies. And um, we didn't know at the early stage that it was unnormal to get rejected as many times as we were, or at least passed upon. But uh, it, it got it got kind of old pretty fast. <laughs> After I joined, um, Dave Dave went on and uh, was doing some touring with his other, with another group that he was in, and uh, we kind of were struggling to find another bass player for a while. Um, it took us about it took us about a year um, of you know playing a lot of straight. Uh, writing a lot and playing basically nothing but showcases. We played like three shows, um, maybe a couple more in that time. There were actually real shows. All the other, th all the performances we did were all for uh, showcases for record company people. Um, and we were kind of becoming a little cynical because we, every time we played our music for somebody, um, for a crowd that we hadn't played for, they were into it. Um, every time we played our music, even for ourselves, we were like, this is, there's something special here. And we just couldn't get, catch the attention of any of these record executives. So we started to basically look on our own and, uh, and on doing it our own way. And so we started developing a street team and, and using the money that we would generate from shows to make product that we could send out to our fans that we had gathered either via the internet or locally. And, uh, and then the gentleman that was working um, for our publishing company got a job at Warner Brothers, and that's eventually how the deal got um, worked out with Warner Brothers. Was uh, you know, um, all of a sudden there was somebody interested at Warner Brothers in what we were doing because they had been interested in us from the very beginning, and so that was definitely that was the beginning of the courtship between us and Warner Brothers, and then we eventually signed. See, we had even at the end of it, it we had to get a little sneaky with it. We had to stick like one of our guys into a record company <laughs> camp. <laughs> And then we had like a spy on the inside. We sent our Trojan horse in. Yeah. Mike has always been kind of, you know, the creative force in the band and also um, our, our captain in the studio. And uh, I think after Minutes to Midnight, you know, he's not only gained, uh, and the other production um, credits to his name, he's gained the confidence from, um, he's always had the confidence from the band, but also within the record company that he can, keep a, a, a non-bias um, outlook on the record. Um, uh, his obvious skills in the studio are very apparent, but when you're in the band producing your record, it, you might kind of overlook some things or not question some things and not push, but Mike has no problem <laughs> pushing, pushing us. Um, especially Chester. Especially me. Uh, it's kind of, it's, it's pretty awesome. So we're, we're all confident that he can uh, steer the ship. After touring for for uh, Hybrid Theory, we then made Reanimation. We went back in the studio almost immediately to make um, Meteora. We toured that for another two years. So we were literally on the road or in the studio for almost f f um, 
for like four years straight. Yeah, pretty almost much five years. almost five years and so when we were done we we're like we need to take some time like and like remember who our families are and our friends because like you know my friends would be like oh yeah yeah you made it like you know you don't need to talk to us anymore and i was like it's not like that you know like i'm not home i'm not around and i can't afford to pay him at the phone bill for five dollar a minute you know phone calls from you know japan to the united states and so um we decided we wanted to take a uh we we're thinking about maybe taking a year off to kind of regather and regroup. And then we decided finally, you know, everything calmed down and we decided um, that it was time to go back in the studio and start working. And when we started working, we realized that we wanted to make something special and unique and maybe making part three of, you know, Hybrid Theory Meteor, we kind of called those volumes one and two. Um, we weren't really into that idea. And so at that point we, we started working on music. We met with Rick Rubin. And when, when, when we were asked, you know, from Rick, um, what kind of record do you guys want to make? And we said, well, we don't want it to sound anything like what we've done before. And he said, great, that's the only way I'll work with you guys. We knew that we had just opened the door to a very dramatic change and like a pretty complicated thing for us as a band to get through because it's the way easier than it sounds. It's easier to say we want to do something different than it actually is to do it. So, um, and that from that time till the time we finished the record, we were thinking what? Like, we were thinking, okay, it's probably gonna take maybe nine months to make this record. Um, you know, 18 months later, we had finished it, and that was not something we had foreseen. So, um, but it was worth it. It was worth going through that. Every person's experience with music is completely unique from everybody else's. So. Some people might like it because it's, you know, some people, some people I know that talk to me, they're like, all I do is work out to your music. Okay, so they like it for that reason. Um, other people are like, you know, this song saved my life, um, which is flattering, but also extremely incomprehensible. And then, you know, other people um, say that they just think that, you know, we're different and, and we represent something that doesn't sound like everything else, and that's what they like about us. And so, um, and some people just like us because we're like, we're, they like our, our live shows and a couple of our songs so they come and see it, you know, casual fans and stuff. Um, it's hard to say. I, I, I think that the, the key for us, I think, what we feel is our secret is, is when we're done with, when we make a record and we choose the final outcome of that record, um, it's something that all of us have decided that we like and it's not just one person going, well, this is what we're going to, these are the songs, this is how it's going to go, these are the lyrics, this is how it's going to go, and then everybody else kind of just has to follow. Um, we do that with writing, like, here's the song, check it out, here's the lyrics I have, but then everybody goes, okay, well, now we're going to grade it, you know, and take it, you know, like, I don't like these lyrics, I don't like this melody, I don't like this cadence or whatever, and we have to go back to the drawing board, and, it, and once we all feel comfortable with something, we feel like it's, you know, we've... We've got something. Special. We had support from the from a, a couple people in, within the record company, um, but the the top guy uh, at the time was not a fan. Um, uh, made that very clear that he was not a fan. Like made it very clear that he could care less about the record and that we were literally like the, the 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 last item on the priority list beyond below even probably getting the toilets cleaned. So um, it was pretty. It was pretty clear, and they, you know, the, there was a few people trying to break the band up in certain ways and reform it to do certain things or get other people out and get new people in. And it was, you know, there was a lot of shady stuff going on, even to the point where the guy who was behind us in the beginning eventually started falling into the pressure of like changing us to make us more like other things out there, and we as a band had to stick together and say. It's either we're gonna do this or you can just let us go. Uh, well, we had points of authority um, <clears throat> in one frame, in one version or another. We had uh, we had like pieces of a lot of the songs. Like, so like the, the end, chorus in the end was pretty much in the end was there. pretty much done, um, with the exception of some melodical things. Uh, but musically, it was almost done. Um, we had the the music for crawling, but and we didn't have the melody. But we went back to a melody that we used for an older song 
and put that over it and it worked. Um, I'd say like maybe a third of the record was in works yeah, and then the rest of it we wrote while we were... See, that, that was a kind of a irony in that question was a lot of people did say like, well, if you guys would have had like these songs when you showcased or blah, 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 then I would have signed it in a minute. And we're like, well, we did. We did. Like we basically had a year, you know, six month years work, more work that we were able to put in for hybrid theory that, you know, these guys especially. But that's like, we're like, isn't that your job to like see those bits and pieces yeah. and kind of like see the vision? It was kind of but. funny because we were playing you know, songs like, it was just paper cut and, you know, we were doing, we were doing songs that were very similar, you know, um, to, the, to the sound of Hybrid Theory. Um, it was obvious to a lot of people, just not to the right people. It was good in the sense that like, we felt like we, we had, um, we weren't wrong about ourselves and about our music. Um, at the same time, it was really scary because, uh, you know, as soon as you become successful with your first record, the label starts talking about, well, you're never going to do this again. And the chances of, you know, having a successful so uh, sophomore record, the sophomore blues is what they call it, um, you know, that's probably more likely going to happen than anything else. And, you know, like, enjoy it while you can, boys. I think for me, it, it, it was really fast, like everything that was going on once the record came out. But at the same time, like, I was so entrenched in our touring cycle and our schedule that it wasn't until I was able to kind of sit back and reflect later on, like w almost after we had even done Meteora, where I was able to look back and take a breath and say that all that that we just went through from album process to touring to whatever was insanity. Like we literally did uh, a stretch of touring for Hybrid Theory where like uh, 320 days out of the year I didn't sleep in my own bed. I slept somewhere else around the world. And at the end of that, I was like, okay, 2003, I was in my bed. I slept at home for maybe 40 nights, which is not cool. Yeah, <laughs> you're averaging, <laughs> you're averaging like less than less than three nights a month. I think for me, I definitely would like to play uh, Ireland a couple more times than we have. This is our second time on three album cycles. Yeah. So even if we played it twice during the next album cycle, that would be an improvement. Which right. Would be, which would be great. I'd like to, there's a lot of places I'd like to go to, like, uh, we, we haven't really played South America very much either. Um, South Africa, we've been offered shows in South Africa probably every year for the last five years, and we haven't been able to do them, so. Believe it or not, it's not an easy place to get to. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but when you're looking at a globe in your, in your house, it is about this big, and it seems like you can get from place to place pretty easily. Um, but there's this concept of time and space that is much grander <laughs> in reality. And so um, it's, it, it's amazing how difficult it is to get everywhere without burning yourself out. I think we definitely were aware that people kind of, for better or for worse, lose track of what's going on with you and move on to other things. And, but at the same time, I think we, we were more worried about putting out something that we weren't satisfied or completely behind or weren't excited about so there's like a, a dual tension but we just kind of said you know it's got to be right from us first and we got to hope that people kind of can gut it out and wait it out and that they will still be excited when we do release something and that hopefully they'll still support it.